we are now going to graph quadratic functions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the default f of x equals x squared. And we're going to graph this by point plotting and then show the pattern that can be used. So we're going to have x and x squared, which is our f of x point. So we're going to pick the following values. And we're going to start with 0, because 0 is the nice one. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1, but minus 1 squared is also 1. So notice they're symmetric. 2 squared is 4, and minus 2 squared is 4. We have symmetry going on around this point right here. So he's our important point. He's what we're going to call the reference or the vertex. He's where the, our graph turns around and is symmetrical around this point. And then notice that if we go this way and this way, that means we're increasing by 1, we're decreasing by 1. So we're getting one away from our reference point each time. But when we do that, we go up one here and up three here. If you remember back when we graphed our square roots, the same thing happened, except that happened on the x's. Now it's happening on the y's. So our graph looks like the following. Our reference point is at zero, zero. We then go over 1 in both directions, and up 1 to get our next point, and then over 1 more, and up 3. So that's our 2, 4, and our minus 2, 4, and we get the following graph. This graph has a domain. Notice that our arrows are going to the left and to the right, so our domain is minus infinity to infinity. But our range starts at the reference point, 0, and goes up to infinity. And so that's our default graph. But this is what's important, is the pattern here on our y's and our pattern on our x's. Our x's always go one more away. Our y's, with one exception that we'll get to later, go plus 1 and then plus 3. And then if we wanted more, we could go plus 5, plus 7, and so on. But we usually get enough points with just the plus 1 and the plus 3, especially since we're going in two directions. Remember that this is the vertex and that we're symmetrical around it. We could draw a line in here, and we could fold this paper in half along that line, and we get the same graph. So to show what happens and to show how we use this, let's, let, let's get a new function, g of x. And let's let this be x squared minus 3. So remember our f of x is this blue line that we just graphed with over 1, up 1, and over 3, over 1, up 3. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one. But notice this time, if we plug 0 in to x, we go down 3. So we're actually going to start our reference for x and g of x is at 0 minus 3. But then we can just move our pattern. We go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, and over 1, up 1, 2, 3. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3. And we get this graph instead which is the same as our other graph, but we just pulled all the points down three places. That's what this minus three outside of the square does. And we could also show, let's do this one in green, h of x equals x squared plus four, in which case we start up at up four, and we go over one, up one, and over one more, and up one, two, three, this graph, which is now up four higher, oops, let's try that a little bit better. All the points are four higher than they were before. We're still symmetrical around that zero, x equals zero. But our y value has changed because we've added four to it or we've subtracted three from it. So the reference point here is at zero, four. And so what we're talking now then about f of x equals x squared plus k, and our reference point will be at 0k. It's up or down, whatever the k value, whatever is being added after the square. Our domain, of course, here is still minus infinity to infinity. If we're only dealing with x squared, then it's always going to be minus infinity to infinity. But our ranges have changed. The range for this one is 3 to infinity, and our range for this one is 4 to infinity. Notice that the range is based off of that k value. And that's how we graph if we only have something added after the x squared.